All right, welcome to chapter seven, section three, called Rational Exponents. Uh, so this is for IM1 or Integrated Math 1 uh, to go over a couple of things you see on your screen here. So you should see a due date on your student's screen. I don't see it on the teacher preview, but it'll be there for you. A number of attempts just tells you that you have unlimited attempts. You can complete this assignment as many times as you would like. Um, number of questions. So this particular assignment has seven questions on it. Grading policy is best score. So um, whichever attempt is the best one is the one you get to keep. Partial credit is enabled, meaning if you answer one of seven questions, you get credit for one question. Um, down here it says once you start your homework, you must finish it before you can work on anything else. So what that means is I need to click start. And down in the bottom right corner here, you will now see um, submit your assignment. So whether or not you've done anything on the screen or you've answered a couple of questions here, when you're ready to leave this assignment, you need to click submit assignment. Um, number one, it'll stop the program from locking you out of all your other assignments. And number two, it'll actually affect the gradebook so your teacher can see what you've been working on. Um, otherwise, it just kind of freezes it at this point. Um, it does save your progress, so if you've worked on some and you've gotten the green check mark, it'll save where you are and start you off exactly where you left off. If you've typed something in here but you have not clicked check, it does not save that. So make sure you always click check before submit assignment. On the side here, we have explanation, example, and message setter. So ex explanation tells you you're going to lose your question attempt because it's literally going to give you the solution to this problem here. So you, you're not going to get the solution and then get to come type it in. Um, sorry, not how it works. Um, you're going to have to come in on another attempt and try your own problem. Um, example will walk you through an example just like the one we're looking at. Um, so it shows you exactly kind of what it wants you to do here. Um, and then you can close this. You can open another example if you would like to. Um, you can also message your teacher directly from the screen. And that way when you reach out, we know where to come help you because it attaches a picture. All right, let's go ahead and look at this. So rational exponents. So with this one, um, what we're going to be doing, we've been learning exponents for the last two sections. So now we're going to kind of go backwards. There's always a forwards and a backwards with math. There's addition, there's subtraction, there's multiplication, there's division. So with exponents, it's repeated multiplication. With factoring, we're kind of going backwards a lot of the time, or then um, they're saying rationalizing. Um, and we're going to get into factoring in problem two and three here a little bit more. Um, not necessarily factoring, but taking roots. It's kind of going backwards. It's almost like repeated division. Um, so. Remember with exponents, we repeat the multiplication or the division with the same number over and over and over again. Um, when we want to do this one, we want to solve for x. We know, number one, that these two sides are equal to each other. So this whole thing has to equal 8. Okay. So what we want to do to solve this, to figure out, well, what does this x have to be in this exponent? I want to make these bases, these, this 8 and this 4, the same. Um, that way I can compare the exponents to each other. So I want to break these guys down into factors. So I'm going to divide you know, down into its prime numbers. So 8 can divide by 2, and that's 4 times. 4 can divide by 2 and 2. So here's my prime number. So I, I can break this down into 2's. 4 can break down into 2's also, and we already did that right here, but we can see it again here. So how many 2's does 8 break down into? Three. So I can write this, this is 2 times 2 times 2. Well, instead I can write it as 2 to the third power. This is the same thing as 8. 2 to the third power is 8. I'm just rewriting it with exponents. Equals 4, I can rewrite as 2 squared. Again, 2 squared is the same thing as 4. I'm just rewriting it with exponents. I also have to make sure that I bring this piece down because it's already there. So this is going to be times 4 or it's times x plus 4, like this. So I have to make sure I bring this in because this part is already here, so it needs to come down. Um, so I'm adding, or not adding, but I'm multiplying by an extra exponent here. So the big reason for this is I wanted these twos, these bases, to be the same. Once the bases are the same, and again, I know the sides are equal, now I can compare the, the, the exponents, and I can actually set the exponents equal to each other. If the left side equals the right side, and I have the same base, the exponents must be equal to each other. So I can actually go 3 equals 2 times x plus 4. I can ignore the bases and just look at the exponents there. So I do need to distribute this too. 
so that I get rid of the parentheses there. Um, so I have 2x plus 8, because 2 times x is 2x, 2 times 4 is 8, equals 3. So now I'm, I'm just going back to kind of um, the algebra, you know, we've been doing for quite a bit of the section or the, the semester here, where I'm solving for a variable. So I want to do addition or subtraction first, because generally it makes it a little easier, it gets rid of some of our fractions. So I'm going to subtract 8 first because it's being added. Opposite operation so that they cancel out. 3 minus 8 is negative 5. They're opposites. One's positive, one's negative. I subtract. 8 is bigger than 3 if I think just about the number distance from 0. So it's negative, so it's negative 5. I have more negatives than positives. So then I have equals 2x. I'm going to deal with this multiplication using division. That's my opposite operation again. 2 divided by 2 is 1. So x drops down here and I have negative 5 halves. So this x that was missing had to be negative 5 halves. So negative 5 halves. Let's see. Check. Ta-da! So it's a little bit of a kind of workaround. These we have to make sure that we're making the bases the same there. All right, let's see. So now we're going to deal with some roots. So again, we've been dealing with exponents, which if we look at exponents, and um, I think we've been dealing with some, if I say, you know, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, well, this would be 2 to the fourth power, like this. And if I actually multiply these together, 2 times 2 gets me 4, times 2 gets me 8, times 2 gets me 16, so this would equal 16. So repeated multiplication is an exponent, and that gets me to 16. So if I wanted to do a, a root like this, and I wanted it to know what the fourth root of 16 was, I'm asking what number could I divide in four times, and it would um, be all the factors here. So really what I want to do is I want to break this down like this, like we did with that other factor tree, so I can divide by 2 a bunch of times. And I want to see, do I have 4 of the same root? I do. So 2 is what I could divide 4 times, so that the root is 2. On this one, the fourth root would be 2. So this is just kind of an example. I know we're not dealing with 2's on that problem, but just to kind of talk through that example there. So I have 8, and I want the third, or the cube root. So I need to break this guy down, and I don't know why I'm changing my color. So I'm going to divide by 2, and I get 4. Divide that by 2, and I get 2 and 2. So here's my prime numbers. So I have 3 2's. 2 is what I could divide 3 times. So 8 divided by 2 is 4, divided by 2 is 2. So I can divide that 3 times by 2, so 2 is my cube root. I have to have 3 of them to match because of this 3 here. So this is the number of numbers I'm looking for. I know that sounds funny, number of numbers. Um, but this is the number of factors. I'll say it that way. Number of factors that I'm looking for. So if this is a 3, I'm looking for 3 of them. If it's a 4, I'm looking for 4. If it's a 2 for a square root, I'm looking for 2 of them. And sometimes you'll find more than that, and you can match up more. So with this one, it's just a 2. Check. All right. Continue. So now we're going to do that same thing, 81, 16, and now we're looking for the fourth root of both of these numbers. So again, I want to break these down. I'm going to go 81. So 81 can't divide by 2, but it can divide by 3. Um, I know that because 8 plus 1 is 9. 9 divides by 3, so it's a little silly 3's trick that you can definitely do there. Um, so let's see, this would go in 2 times um, with 20 left over, so that, or 21 left over, so 27. Um, so I just kind of did that in my head, but you can definitely do this off to the side here. So going two times here, you'd have six left over, one, two, three goes into 21, seven times evenly, so you have nothing left over. Um, and then 27 can also break down by three. Um, so that can break down three and nine. Nine can also break down into three and three. So I'm looking for four of the exact same number and I found it. So the fourth root of 81 would be 3. I can divide 81 by 3 four times. So this would be 3, and I don't need this, the root anymore, the, the fourth root, because I took it out from under there. I found out what it was. It's 3. 
16, so we're going to break 16 down. And we've already done this one a couple of times. So um, 16 divides by 2, 8 divides by 2, and 4 also divides by 2. So I end up with 4 twos, which I'm looking for 4 of the same number. So 16 can divide by 2 4 times. So 2 is the fourth root. So 3 over 2. Oops. 3 over 2. Like that. All right, so again, exponents are repeated multiplication, Q, or roots are kind of like repeated division. All right, five, t to the fourth power. So write the following as an exponential expression. So what they want us to do on this one is they want us to change it. Um, there's two different ways we can write this. Um, so the, the standard for this one is if we have x, m, n, so this is kind of the, the algebraic looking version. I have a base, I, I have m, n, and that can be written as n over x to the m. So this is an exponent, this, this top of the fraction, this is a root, the bottom of the fraction is a root. So it's just two ways to write this. So I'm starting on this side, so I have my exponent, this is my numerator, and I have my root. This is my denominator. So I'm going to write it a fraction, 4 fifths, exponent, root, and then I'm going to put the base on it like that. Um, so it's just another way to write kind of the same thing um, when we're doing that. Oh, darn it, that's not what I want to do. I want to go like that, t, and then this I actually want to be a fraction, so I want that to be 4 fifths. So, all right, perfect. Okay, so we're still converting here. So now we're going to evaluate these ones. So this is saying that the 1 is the exponent. Well, that's not going to change anything, anything to the first exponent is itself. But I want to take the fourth root of 256. So I need to figure out what number can I divide in four times and, and get the same answer there. Um, so I know I can divide by 2 because it's even. So if we go 2, 5, 6 divided by 2, I can go in once. 56 drops down here. I can go in twice, one, and then I can go in eight times for 16. So it goes 128, like that. And then I can divide that by two, and I'd get six and four. So I can kind of do that one a little quicker. 12 divided by two is six, eight divided by four, or eight divided by two is four. This guy can divide by two again. So I can go 64, that's three and two. I can divide by 2 again, so I get 16. I can divide by 2 again. So now I'm at numbers that I, I definitely know. These are a little quicker. So this ended up really long, this tree here, this factor tree. So what I want to do, I'm looking for the fourth root. So I want to match four of them. Here's four, so that's two. And here's another four. So every time I can take out more than one group, I have to multiply them back together. So the fourth root of 256 is going to be 4, not 2. I took out 2 once, and then I took out 2 twice. So it's 4. So I make sure I multiply those back together. So the fourth root of 256 is 4. That's what I could divide 4 times. If it was the eighth root, that would be 2, because I can divide 2 8 times. So if we counted these, there's, there's 8 twos. Um, so. Um, just, you know, make sure you're paying attention to what you're taking out of there. All right, so 64, we want the third root. So I want, or the cube root. Um, so I want to break this guy down. So again, um, and I can actually kind of use this over here. I have 32, 2 and 16, 2 and 8, 2 and 4, and 2 and 2. So remember, I want the third root, meaning I need to match three of them. So I can take out 2, 1, 2, then I can take out another 2 here. So again, the, f the third root of 64 is also 4. So the answer ended up being the same for both of those. Okay, so now we're going to use this same idea here. So this is the, an exponent. And then I'm going to take the cube root of that, like that. Um, 
So with each one of these, I'm going to have 8, 8, 8, and 8. There's four of them. Each 8 can break down into 4 and 2 like this. 2, 4, 2, 2, 2, 4, 2, 2. I have a lot of 2's here, a whole lot of 2's. So I want to match up every 3, um, which, you know, if we were kind of paying attention, we've had a lot of 2 roots on this one. Um, so I have 3, I have 3, I have 3, and I have 3. So 8 is actually a cube, right? It's 2 cubed. So every time I have 8, I can take out a 2 because I can divide 2 3 times into each one of these 8s. So I need to make sure I multiply this back together. 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16. So the cube root of 8 to the 4th power is 16. So I know that one was a little bit, you know, involved because I had to think about how many 2's do I have. I, and how many 8's do I have? I have 4 8's. Each 8 has 3 2's in it, so I can take those back out. So you can also do the math on this one and do 8 to the 4th power. You're going to get an awfully big number and then take the cube root. So there is another way. Let me see if I can grab my calculator because there's another way to do this also. You can do it on the calculator. This is kind of the smart calculator. So when you're using your smartphone, this is what it should look like. So I can go 8 to the 4th power, and to do that I have to do this little XY because I don't have a 4th on here. So I click this button and then I tell it that the Y, the exponent, is 4. So here's the number, that's 8 to the 4th power. And then I can click on this button, this is actually cube root, if it was bigger than 3 I'd have to use this one again. But this is the cube root, so I can click on that and it'll tell me what it is. So that's another way that you can do it, you can use that calculator also. All right, so let me do this last guy here. So we have W squared, seven, six. So remember, this is an exponent, and this is a cube root. So we need to make sure that we apply them correctly um, when we're doing this. And we're going to multiply, basically. So we have W squared times seven, six because that's what power of a power, we multiply. Multiply across the top, so you have w to the 14th over 6, like this. Um, and it, it doesn't want you to do anything else with that because you get the w, so they just wanted to see if you knew how to combine those two pieces when you give it a fraction. So it's going to be 14, 6. We can reduce, actually. I think they do want us to reduce because 14 divided by 2 is 7 and 6 divided by 2 is 3. So I think it's going to want us to reduce that because um, it says simplify. Maybe it would have let us leave it. Um, actually, let's go ahead and test it. Why not? 14, 6. I like testing it because um, I don't mind doing that. So it says write your answer in simplest form. So it is being picky on this one. Um, so a lot of the time if it, if it tells you to simplify, it doesn't want you to leave you know, those even integers or, or anything that can be simplified like that. All right, so that was section three. I will see you in section four.